Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. Hello, hello. I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. I want to thank you once again for taking some of your time to spend here with us today. In this podcast, we're going to be talking about the book Tribes by Seth Godin. This is a great book. It came out, I believe, in 2009. I finally got around to cracking it open and reading it. I've been hearing about it for really years, and I think it is so relevant and so applicable to what we do as chiropractors. I wanted to spend some time talking with you about it. So what Mr. Godin talks about, he says... Prior to the advent of the internet and the digital interconnectivity we all had, there used to be, especially in corporations, the management and leaders were at the top, and everyone else just sort of worked for them, the sheeple, and they went along with it. But now, because of all of these technologies which have emerged, we all have the power to set ourselves apart from others by establishing ourselves as leaders. Now, I know what you're thinking. I looked at that and said, oh, for all leaders, who is following? But the thing is, so many of us are not willing. We don't want to be in the spotlight, we are afraid to take that step and become or position ourselves to become a leader. So not everyone is doing it, even though the capability is there and has been there for some time. But this represents an enormous opportunity for us as chiropractors to position ourselves as a leader in our community and to build our own tribe. So here's what Mr. Godin says. He presents the idea that humans are wired to unite and form tribes. He defines a tribe as any group of people, either large or small, who are connected to one another, a leader or an idea. So doesn't that sound familiar? I mean, think about CrossFit. That's a perfect example. There's someone I don't, I can't rem- don't recall his name, but he started CrossFit with this idea of building tribes and he's been incredibly successful doing it. He has built these tribes all over the United States and probably beyond. I don't do CrossFit, but I treat people who are CrossFitters and they're enormously loyal. There's people that say it's even like a cult. Um, but these people are very loyal to going to CrossFit, very dedicated, and it's a mindset. And so you can see how this tribe works, this tribe in action. It's a real thing. You can look at uh, Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil. These people have a following. So a great way to think about the tribe that you want to build is who are your followers? Who are you going to attract? So some key insights from the book. He says, Tribes need leadership. And again, that's where we come in. We want to be those leaders of our practice and in our community. And we're going to attract more and more followers as the word gets out that we are the leaders, that we are the ones they're worth following. He says, leaders strive to make positive change. Now, again, doesn't that sound so familiar right in our wheelhouse as a chiropractor? Because what are we trying to do? We are trying to get people to lead more positive, healthy, healthful lives, and we try to do it with each interaction, but it's really powerful if we can bring more and more people sort of into our uh, under our leadership and show them a pathway to a healthier life. Leaders aren't afraid to take risks and challenge the status quo. And again, as chiropractors, isn't that what we do? Doesn't our profession in and of itself, challenge the status quo. I think it does. We're the ones out there saying maybe pills and surgery aren't always the the first choice for everyone. Maybe those should be more of a last resort. So again, I think as chiropractors, we are in a unique position to really take advantage of these things that Mr. Godin is talking about and put ourselves in a very unique position to lead. And he also says that everyone can be a leader in some way. And I think that's true. So within your own office, you're the leader, But there are other doctors in there sometimes. There are CAs. There are other people that come in contact with with the patients. And certainly everyone should be on the same page. And we should all be leading our patients towards health together. So some suggestions that Mr. Godin makes. One of them is build your tribe by communicating a message and stories that are new and exciting. So I think if you've been in practice for any length of time, you certainly right away, even in school, you have success stories. You have exciting stories you can tell people as examples. And remember, if you come to present information, there's a really boring way to do it, and that is reading a PowerPoint. Here's my PowerPoint. Uh, Slide A says one, two, three, four. Next page, one, two, three, four. But if you can communicate with a story, 
it is such a better way to bring people in and have them really understand and connect with what it is you are saying. Think about comedians. I mean, this is what they do, right? They just get up there and they go from subject to subject, telling really funny, entertaining stories. But some of the stories have lessons or we can all imagine ourselves in those positions when they talk about something that happened at the checkout counter at the grocery store or something like that. Same thing with what we do. So when we communicate our message, make it in the form of a story. TED Talks does this. Yes, they talk about data and things like that, but really the person who is giving the presentation at TED Talks is up there telling stories with a message. Look for opportunities to make a positive change instead of sheepishly following an outdated plan. Uh, and I don't think we're sheeps in chiropractic. We certainly are. I mean, if anything, all of us want to be heard and all of us have voices and we want to want to talk to people about it. But uh, make sure that you get out there and that you do it. And especially if you've gotten comfortable, especially if you've been in practice a while and you're making a pretty good living and, you know, I don't know, things are kind of good the way you are. Hey, if they are the way they are, then why bother? Why do anything? But if you want more, if you want more prosperity for your life and to help others, widen up that net, make your dreams bigger, and don't be afraid to get out there and put yourself out in front of the community in order to do so. So a couple of quotes from the book, he says, you can't have a tribe without a leader and you can't be a leader without a tribe. So my suggestion is just start leading. Doesn't matter what you're doing or where you're doing it. Start thinking in a leadership way. So I've talked about this in earlier podcasts, but one of the ways you can lead is by example, lead a healthy lifestyle, take good care of yourself, keep yourself fit and healthy and be a model of health for your community and for your patient base. That's one great way you can do it, but just assume the leadership role. He goes on to say that for the first time ever, everyone in an organization, and not just a boss, they're expected to lead. The very structure of today's workplace means that it's easier than ever to change things and that individuals have more leverage than under ever before. So for us, uh, you know, most of the chiropractic offices are small practices, um, but certainly everyone in there, as I said earlier, they have an important role. And it's important for everyone to really be leveraging that in order to build the tribe. And he also goes on and he says, marketing used to be about advertising and advertising is expensive. Today, marketing is about engaging with the tribe and delivering products and services with stories that spread. And that's it. I mean, viral marketing, whether it's a video or word of mouth or whatever it is, but these stories, they do spread. And those, are the, incidentally, they're the best ones because they don't cost anything. One great thing that he points out is leaders have followers and managers have employees. Managers make widgets. Leaders make change. We want to make change. So we don't want to manage our office. We want to lead these offices. We want to lead our patients into a healthier life. So one other thing, this isn't in the book, but I want to point it out. So if you've been in practice a while, or if you're just starting out, where can you find people to become part of your tribe? Look around for other tribes. And if you're a CrossFitter, great. Go connect with the CrossFitting area in your community. If you're not, think about joining one. If that's not your cup of tea, Go to the Dungeons and Dragons gaming night. I mean, whatever it is, whatever type of person you are, connect with that tribe. And guess what? That tribe, you will be their go-to person for health and wellness because you have made that connection. That is one of the quickest ways you can get out there, get your name out there, or reconnect with your community in a way you haven't before so that you can bring more people into your tribe. You can get more healthy people out there telling everyone where they need to go for their leader in health. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo podcast. For links to what was discussed in today's episode, check out the show notes at CairoBusinessMojo.com. And be sure to jump on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review if you like what you heard. We'll see you next time.